Real quick about that apneic oxygenation. For those of you who aren't aware, apneic oxygenation is placing a nasal cannula on the patient at high flow, not really high flow, but what we consider high flow for a regular cannula, over 15 liters a minute or more. During intubation, what that does is it causes a high pressure of oxygen in the upper airway, and that diffuses down to the lower airway where they come to the AC membrane, and you have a lot of pressure of oxygen on one side of that AC membrane, and then it diffuses across, so it, we passively diffuse oxygen all the time. This guy went like an hour without breathing but never desaturated because he was on passive oxygenation. The trade-off is that if we are not moving our chest for long periods of time we will retain carbon dioxide and develop respiratory acidosis. We've known about this for at least 60 years. Doesn't work as well if they have pulmonary shunt like pneumonia, pulmonary edema, the things we mentioned where there's a problem on that alveolar side that, that makes it more difficult for that passive oxygenation to get through. But still, it's it's a standard of care. So you'll see even in bags now, so here's that Scram Tactical bag. It even has an apneic oxygenation tab on here for nasal O2. So this comes on. I don't, uh, I don't recommend putting it on like normal where you would take it and put it on like this and go around the ears. Um, still keep the prongs the correct way, but come from the top of the head and go like this. And then I just don't even fasten it, just kind of tuck it underneath the head as long as that works. The, the reason for that when you're doing nasal oxygenation is that you, know, you keep it on during the apneic period and things like that. So let's see them like this. And then I'm gonna keep that nasal oxygen on during my attempt to uh, intubate this patient. When I take this off, let's say that I now, cause I'm, I'm gonna keep this in place, right? And now let's say I intubate this patient. Let's go ahead and put this in here. Uh, having this at the top of the head allows me to take this off without breaking this circuit. Because if you can think about that, if it was the other way where you had it on like normal, it's now creating a loop around this. And this would have like either a ventilator or a bag valve mask attached to it. And then you get stuck like this. And I've seen a lot of people cut these <laughs> or just break them because they don't want to break the circuit on the endotracheal tube. So a little bit easier. It might look silly, uh, but still prongs facing the correct way. So they're kind of curved like this, but just tuck it around the backside and remember at least 15 liters uh, during your uh, intubation attempt.